I'm about to do your Sagittarius December 2020 love reading and in this reading we're going to take a look at the status of the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest. Sagittarius, how is it going? Come on in, have a seat, make yourself comfortable. My name's Alan from UnknownTruthTarot.com. Welcome back to another Sagittarius love reading video. If this is your first time here and you have questions that you want answered about your romantic love life or your relationship, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you never miss any of the Sagittarius readings I post for you every week. Now let's get on with this Sagittarius love reading for today because today we're going to take a look at the status of the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest. So whoever it is you're romantically involved with, romantically thinking about, or just romantically energetically connected to in some way, we're going to take a look at the connection between the two of you guys. And we're going to do that by pulling one card for the mutual point of interest between the two of you. Then I'm going to pull three cards for you, Sag. I'm going to pull three cards for your person. And then I'm going to clarify everything with the second deck to see if we can get down to the bottom of the unknown truth about what's really going on in this love connection of yours. Now just keep in mind that this is a general reading and it's not even possible for it to resonate with all 750 million plus Sagittarius people walking the face of the earth right now all at the same time. And it's even possible in general readings for the energies to get reversed or flip-flopped around backwards, especially for cross-watchers. So if you're not a Sagittarius and you're watching this reading because you have an interest in a Sagittarius and you're just trying to find out what's up with them, I'm totally cool with that. But just keep in mind that especially for you, the energies can get reversed or flip-flopped around backwards. So you just got to take this as it resonates for you. Now regardless of how this reading resonates for you, you still probably want to check your moon, your rising, and your Venus sign videos just because they can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation and you can find the links to those videos in the description box down below. Now enough yakking about that stuff, let's get on with this Sagittarius reading for today. And let's get started by pulling one card for the mutual point of interest between Sagittarius and their romantic person of interest. Okay, now let's get three cards for you, Saggy. What's going on with Sagittarius in this connection for December 2020 as it relates to their romantic person of interest and the connection between the two of them? Let's get one more card for Sagittarius, please. Oh, looks like you're getting a bonus card. Let's see what we have. All right. Now let's get three cards for your person. What's going on with Sagittarius' romantic person of interest as it relates to Sagittarius and the connection between the two of them for December 2020, please? What's going on with Sagittarius' romantic person of interest? Okay. Let's see. Right. On the bottom of the deck, the overall energy of this reading is the Nine of Wands. Now, the Nine of Wands is a card of being walled off and defensive. It's also a card of healing, though. This is the wounded warrior. He's been hurt, and that's why he's built this wall around himself, because he doesn't want to be hurt anymore. He's trying to protect himself so he doesn't get hurt, so that he can get his energy right. He can heal and be able to move on to the next step in his journey. So that's the overall energy of the reading. Let's see what we have here. For the mutual point of interest, now this is a shared energy between you and your person. This is something where you're both thinking or feeling or acting this way. This is an energy for both of you. It's affecting both of you somehow. And the mutual point of interest between the two of you is the devil. So this is Capricorn energy. This is usually a very heavy energy, like a toxic energy. This is some obsession. This can be addiction. This can represent something that you guys both feel trapped by, something that you feel bound to, like you feel like you can't escape it. Sometimes this just represents like a, a very strong sexual attraction between the two of you or a, a connection that's like such a, a magnetic attraction to it that you both feel like you can't escape it. So let's clarify this devil energy. Tell me more about the devil and why it's here for the mutual point of interest between Sagittarius and their romantic person of interest, please. Why is this devil card here? Let's get two more on the devil, please. 
Okay, we're taking a bonus card again. I'm having a feeling there's a lot to talk about in this particular reading. So let's see what we have. <laughs> okay, on the bottom of the deck, we have the chariot. Now this is cancer energy. This is the fastest moving energy in the entire tarot deck. This is about using the will moving forward rapidly like very quickly in success and victory it's about moving forward past all the problems all the challenges all the obstacles from the past moving past all that stuff quickly and successfully moving forward in victory here now to clarify this devil energy as the mutual point of interest between the two of you we have the seven of swords the six of cups the ace of cups and we have the Eight of Wands. So this Seven of Swords energy, this has got a few different meanings. The first meaning, not such a good meaning. This is trying to get away with something. This is lying, cheating, stealing, deceptive behavior, overall being sneaky, trying to get away with something. Now, this can also represent self-preservation, as in not wanting to be hurt, which we've already seen here with this Nine of Wands energy, this being walled off and defensive, trying to heal so that you can get your energy right and move on to the next step in your journey. This can mean something very similar to that. The reason he's stealing these swords is because he doesn't want those swords used against him. He doesn't want to be hurt by those swords, so he's stealing them to prevent being hurt. This can also represent leaving something behind. He can only carry five of those seven swords and he's got to leave the other two behind. So it can mean any of those things. You just got to take it however it resonates for you. And maybe this will get a little bit more clear as we go along here. But the next card to clarify the devil is the Six of Cups. Now this is about the past. This is reminiscing about the past, thinking about the past, thinking about the good old days, the way it used to be. This can represent past life connections. This is a very strong emotional connection between the two of you. This can even represent like soulmate twin flame level energy. It can even represent someone from the past making a comeback. Hmm. Clarifying the devil. So this, this could be some sort of a karmic situation here. There could be some sneakiness going on. Someone from the past could be showing back up, causing some sort of sneaky behavior, some sort of like maybe a, a toxic karmic relationship from the past coming in. Could be dealing with the cancer. Right under this chariot card, we have the two of swords. This is a decision that needs made, only it's not being made, either because there's not enough information to make the decision or because there's something that you guys aren't seeing, or something that you guys don't want to look at. Hmm. Now, the next card to clarify the devil is this Ace of Cups. This is a new beginning in love and emotions here. And then we also have this Eight of Wands. This is a very fast-moving energy. It's probably second place only to this chariot. So we've got a lot of really quick-moving energy right here. This is an energy of a lot coming at you all at once. It could be similar to like trying to take a drink of water out of a fire hose. It's just too much coming at you. This can also represent rapid back and forth passionate communication. It could represent rapid forward movement, rapid progress on something that you have a lot of desire for. Well, that's the mutual point of interest. I'm not 100% clear yet on what's going on, so this will probably make more sense as we get farther along in the reading. But in terms of your energy for December 2020, Saggy, we have the Seven of Pentacles, the Five of Pentacles, we have the Death card, and we have the Emperor. So this Seven of Pentacles energy, this is a period of pausing to reflect pausing to take stock of this connection to take stock of this whole situation and what you're doing is you're looking at these seeds that have been planted and you're trying to decide are these seven seeds going to grow into the ten of pentacles that you actually want is this worth investing in is this worth continuing to invest in worth putting your time effort and energy into or is this maybe a situation where it's not going to pan out the way that you want it to and maybe it's time to cut your losses and move on. So this is a period of you pausing to reflect on that type of stuff, trying to figure that out. 
right, so tell me more about this Seven of Pentacles in Sagittarius's energy for December 2020 as it relates to this connection, please. Let's get two more on this Seven of Pentacles, please. Mm, this one's screaming at me. It's wanting to come out. Let's get one more on this Seven of Pentacles, okay? We'll take that. Mm. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Queen of Pentacles. So this is Capricorn energy. Although in a general, we've already seen Capricorn represented here with this Devil energy. In a general reading, it's really hard to tell. This is an Earth sign for sure. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Typically for me, this is Capricorn. But this is a very grounded, stable, abundant, prosperous, nurturing type energy. This is someone who's good at managing the assets and the resources of the home and the family. Someone who's good at managing the children. This is a very grounded, abundant energy. So this is either representing your energy or it's representing how you view your person. <clears throat> well, it could represent more than that too, I guess, but that's what we're going to say for right now. Let's see what we have here. To clarify this Seven of Pentacles, we have the Seven of Wands, the King of Swords, and the Six of Swords. So this Seven of Wands is similar to this Nine of Wands in that it's like a walled-off defensive energy. This is like an energy of defending your position, defending your stance on something. These other wands represent other people, their words, their actions, their opinions, what they're saying, what they think about something. And this is you defending yourself against that. This can also represent you being willing to fight for what it is that you believe in, fight for what it is that you think is right, fight for what you want, fight for your desires here. Next we have the King of Swords. This is Gemini energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a decision maker. This is someone who is very smart, very analytical, very logical, very reasonable, and very fair. But they're not very, well, they're completely emotionally disconnected, really. They don't put a lot of stock into the emotions behind what's going on or the story behind what's going on. They're only interested in the truth and the facts of the matter. And they're going to use the truth and the facts of the matter to come to the best, most logical, most rational, fair decision possible for everyone involved. So we got you taking stock of the situation, trying to figure out whether this is worth investing in or not. You're somewhat defensive here, trying to be logical, not emotional about this. And then we've got this Six of Swords. This is moving forward into calmer waters. It's about leaving the rough, choppy waters of the past behind. Moving forward into calmer waters, more clear waters, where you've got more clarity and where you're moving forward toward what it is that you actually want. Now the next card in your energy, Sagittarius, is the Five of Pentacles. Now fives are about conflict and change. This is abandonment. This is being cast aside, being left out in the cold, or maybe even feeling like you're not good enough. So let's clarify this Five of Pentacles. Why is the Five of Pentacles here for Sagittarius? Well, that one clearly wanted to come out. Let's grab that sucker real quick here before it gets away. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Ace of Swords. Now this is the Sword of Victory. It's the Sword of Truth. It's the Sword of Clarity. This can also be the sword that you would use to sever a relationship or to sever something that's not in balance in your life anymore. We're clarifying this five of pentacles. I'm hoping that this isn't telling me that you were severed. You know, this connection was severed and that you were left out in the cold. To clarify this five of pentacles, we have the seven of cups. So now we've got three sevens. Oh, dang, we have all four sevens out here on the board already. The seven of swords is clarifying the mutual point of interest between you. And now we've got this, the fourth seven out here. This seven of cups, this is options and choices. But it's confusion about those options and choices. There's a lot of cups here. There's a lot of different stuff in these cups. There's a lot of emotions involved here. And this is you having options and choices to make, but confusion about that because you don't want to make a mistake and you're not 100% sure what the correct option to choose is. 
Next, to clarify the Five of Pentacles, we have the Magician. Now, this is a Master Manifester. This is a very balanced energy. This is someone who has all the tools, all the abilities, all the resources, all the skills, all the smarts, everything they need to manifest or create from nothing whatever it is their will desires. There's the Ace of Pentacles, the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Swords, the Ace of Wands. So you literally have everything you need to create whatever it is you want out of this situation. And this is you actively trying to manifest something here. Next, we've got the Page of Swords. This Pages are messengers, so this is news and messages. This is communication. The Page of Swords is an energy of someone who's like a student, who's trying to learn something, who's trying to figure something out. Do your due diligence, do the, the research to figure something out. This can also be an energy of someone who's spying or keeping tabs on someone. So either you trying to keep tabs on your person or your person trying to keep tabs on you. Like, you know, stalking their social media pages, driving past where they live, where they work, asking people about them, doing it because you're trying to figure out what's going on. Possibly because you've been left out in the cold. Possibly because you're confused about all these options and what to do. You're, you're ready to manifest. You have everything that you need to manifest something out of this. You're just not quite 100% sure, so you're checking in on things to see what's going on. Next in your energy is death. This is Scorpio energy. This is a massive transformation that's taking place. This is like... If you think about when the butter or caterpillar turns into a butterfly, it goes into a cocoon. And it's not having a party in there. It's not having all fun and games. It's going through a very painful transition. It's actually dying and transforming into something new. So this is a transformation that's taking place in your life. Maybe a painful transformation, but it's a process that, of change here. So let's clarify this death card. Tell me more about death for Scorpio, please. Okay, yeah. Having a feeling there is a whole bunch to talk about here. Wow. On the bottom of the deck, we have that chariot card again. Again, this is cancer energy. This is a very fast-moving energy. Using the will to move forward past the problems and challenges and obstacles of the past to move forward quickly and victoriously. Second time we've seen that here. Now, to clarify death, we have the Queen of Wands. We have that Five of Pentacles again, the Four of Swords, and we have the Emperor. So this Queen of Wands, this is usually Aries energy, although in a general reading this can be Leo or Sagittarius as well. This is someone who has a bold, passionate, fiery, determined type personality, someone who's also very intuitive is represented by that black cat. The Queen of Wands knows exactly what she wants, and she goes after what she wants with bold, passionate, fiery determination. It's very rare that the Queen of Wands doesn't get what she wants. She doesn't really take no for an answer, and she goes after what she wants. Next to clarify death, we have that Five of Pentacles again. So again, this is abandonment. This is being cast aside, being left out in the cold. And we've got this Four of Swords. This is a period of taking a pause, taking a rest, taking a break, doing some healing, which again we've already seen with this Wounded Warrior card, being walled off and defensive so you can heal so you don't keep getting hurt anymore. This is taking that pause to heal, but also to go internal, to do some thinking about something, to do some reflection on something, trying to figure out what to do moving forward. And then we've got the Emperor. This is Aries energy. This is an energy of taking charge of the situation, taking control of the situation, possibly setting some boundaries. But again, this is a Master Manifester as well. We've already seen that with this Magician card. So you are a Master Manifester. You've got everything you need, all the tools, all the resources to be able to put together <clears throat> Excuse me, a plan to get what you want and then to execute that plan to get what you want. So this is you taking charge of a situation. We've got two cards right here together. You know what you want, and you're going after it, and you're not going to be denied. Now the final card in your energy, Sagittarius, is the Emperor again. So you've got the Emperor here twice. 
Again, this is Aries energy. This is taking charge, taking control of the situation, going after what it is that you want. So tell me more about the Emperor, please. Why is this Emperor here in Sagittarius' energy for December 2020 as it relates to this connection? Let's get two more on this Emperor card, please. Okay, we'll take another extra one, that's fine. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Hierophant. So this, this usually represents for me commitment, like a strong commitment, trying to take charge and get some sort of a commitment. This is about taking things to the next level. Now sometimes this can be the marriage card. Definitely some sort of a commitment that you're looking for here. Now to clarify the Emperor, we got the Four of Wands, the Nine of Cups, the Page of Pentacles, and the Ten of Swords. So this Four of Wands, fours are about stability. This is about stability of the home life, stability of the family life, stability of this connection between the two of you. It's, it's about manifesting something again. Like the thing that you're trying to manifest has actually shown up in the real world here. It's about manifesting something that's worth celebrating. But these four wands that hold up this canopy can also represent 1111, which would be the soulmate twin flame number. This can also be a card that would signify like a, an engagement or a wedding. And we've got the Hierophant right here on the bottom of the deck. So this could tell me that this connection it could end up leading to an engagement or a marriage if things get straightened out here. They don't look like they're anywhere near near being at that stage, though. The next card we have to clarify the Emperor is the Nine of Cups. Now, this is wish fulfillment. This is also you being emotionally happy, emotionally content full of self-love, like in and of yourself, and not needing someone else to get your happiness from, not needing someone else to get your love from. All of that comes from inside of you. This can also be telling me that you see your person as wish fulfillment to you, and that you want this level of commitment with them. You want to be able to take things to the next level, to celebrate things, to have this stability of the connection between the two of you, even though you are totally okay on your own. And we've got the Page of Pentacles. Pages are messengers, so this is news and messages of some practical, tangible matter, some new opportunity presenting itself. This can also represent planning for the future. But then we've got this Ten of Swords. This is... Maybe that's what this is saying here, that, that you were trying to take charge of this situation, trying to, to build this level of commitment here, trying to have this stability, this thing that's worth celebrating, possibly leading to engagement and marriage. You viewed your person as wish fulfillment. You were planning for the future with them. And then we run into this Ten of Swords. Tens are completion, so this is an ending. This is a painful ending, a swift ending, sometimes even an ending that you didn't see coming or an ending in betrayal. As you can see, there's Ten Swords stuck in this person's back, so this person clearly didn't see that coming. I'm also pretty sure it don't take ten swords to kill somebody, yet there's ten swords in this person's back. So this is a very swift, painful, abrupt ending with some finality to it. Which is probably where this death card, this massive transformation takes place. This is probably why you've got this five of pentacles being abandoned, being left out in the cold. Hmm... Probably why you had to go through this period of taking a rest to heal. It's also why this is the overall energy of the reading, being walled off and defensive, trying to heal so that you can move forward. I'm still not 100% clear what this devil energy is. Like I said, this can represent obsession. This could represent that you're obsessed with your person or that your person is obsessed with you. Actually, this is mutual energy between the both of you. So this could be any number of things, some toxic, heavy energy here. All right, so we've taken a look at the mutual point of interest and your energy in this connection. Let's take a look at your person's energy. Because in their energy, they have the Eight of Pentacles, 
they have the two of cups and they have the strength card so this eight of pentacles this is putting in the work on something or being willing to put in the work on something so let's clarify this eight of pentacles tell me more about this eight of pentacles for sagittarius romantic person of interest as it relates to Saggi and the connection between the two of them in December 2020. Let's get three cards on this Eight of Pentacles, please. Hmm. Kind of strange. They were wanting to jump out like crazy. I normally get three cards when I clarify, and I got quite a bit more than that for you. So now they seem to be clammed up a little bit. Aha! As soon as I say that, then we start getting them. Okay, hmm, on the bottom of the deck, we have the Three of Swords. Now, this is heartbreak and sadness, usually from a third-party situation. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean a romantic third party, like you were getting cheated on or you were cheating on your person. This can be literally any energy that's not your energy, that's not your person's energy. So, it could be the pandemic, it could be working too much, it could be nosy family members, nosy neighbors... This can literally be any energy that doesn't belong to either of you. But this is about heartbreak and sadness happening. And right under that, we have the Two of Wands. This is a crossroads, a fork in the road, a decision point. And it's a decision about which path leads you to the world that you really want and which path do you need to leave behind to get there. So now this is your person's energy. So they have some heartbreak and sadness. They're at a crossroads trying to figure out which path to go down. And under that, we have the hanged man. This is Pisces energy. This is about progress being halted. Everything just being at a complete standstill. Everything being stagnated. Now, the hanged man is hanging upside down because he's trying to look at things from all these different perspectives, all these different angles, different points of view than your person would normally look at things. <clears throat> and they're doing that trying to gain enlightenment on something, trying to figure out what to do moving forward because progress has been halted here. So we're clarifying this Eight of Pentacles. This is like either them putting in the work on something or being willing to put in the work on something here. To clarify that, we have the Four of Cups, the Three of Pentacles, and we have the Five of Swords. So this Four of Cups, this is an energy of like emotional discontentment, like not being fully happy, not being content emotionally. So much so that your person's got these three cups here and they're not really happy with that and they're daydreaming about something else that might make them more emotionally happy and more, uh, more emotionally content. Now in a love reading for me, this usually represents that there is a love offer on the table already. It just hasn't been accepted or rejected yet. It's just kind of been left hanging here in the air. Or this could represent your person is thinking about making a love offer and they just haven't done it yet because they're afraid they might be rejected. Next, we've got the Three of Pentacles. This is teamwork, collaboration, working together as equals to build something of value, to build something great. But then we've got this Five of Swords. This is a painful energy. This Fives are about conflict. So this can be a conflict in communications, a conflict in thoughts. So if this is a conflict in communications, that would mean like bickering and arguing or them using their words as weapons, using tongues like a sword to cut you. If this is a conflict in their thoughts, it could be them having negative thoughts about themselves, negative beliefs about themselves, possibly negative beliefs about this connection. I mean, we've got this Four of Cups where they might be thinking about making a love offer, but they're afraid they'll be rejected, which could mean that they're having some negative thoughts about themselves here. Sometimes, though, this can also be an energy of like a winning at all costs type mentality, almost like, you know, I'm going to get what I want. And I don't care what happens to you. I don't care if you get hurt. If you get hurt, well, that's tough. As long as I get what I want, that's all I'm really worried about. So it could be that, too. There's been some heartbreak and sadness here. That is for sure. There's a heavy, toxic-type energy right here. And we've even got that Seven of Swords, which, like I said, can be sneaky behavior. Lying, cheating, stealing. That's... When these two are combined together, that's not such a good thing. When you've got all three of these together, that's not such a great thing. 
definitely some sort of painful situation has occurred here. Now the next card in your person's energy for December 2020 is the Two of Cups. Now this is a love connection between two people. This is I breathe you in, you breathe me in, we're connected, but it's a two. And in tarot, twos represent needing to make a choice. So let's clarify this Two of Cups for Sagittarius' person, please. Why is this Two of Cups here for Sagittarius' person? Okay. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Seven of Pentacles again, which is the first card out in your energy. This again is a period of pausing to take stock of the situation, to reflect on this situation, looking at the seeds that have been planted and trying to decide, is this going to grow into the Ten of Pentacles that they actually want? Is this going to work out the way they want it to? Or is it not? And maybe this is a spot where they need to cut their losses and move on. So we've got a choice about this love connection. We've got the love connection being looked at, taken stock of, having some pause to reflect on it all, to figure it out. Now to clarify that Two of Cups, we have the Chariot again. Again, this is Cancer Energy. We've got the Two of Pentacles, and we have the King of Cups. So this Chariot card, again, is the fastest energy in the deck. It's about using the will to move forward past the problems and challenges of the past, to move forward quickly and successfully in victory. Now we've got this Two of Pentacles here. Now again, twos are about decisions. We've, we've got some sort of decision about this love connection here. This is like... And a card of balance, but it's more about like trying to maintain their balance or regain their balance. This is like a, a one foot in, one foot out type of an energy where they're like weighing the pros and cons of something. Do I or don't I? Should I or shouldn't I? Taking stock of this situation, almost like do I or don't I move on? Do I invest in this? Don't I invest in this? Do I cut this off and move on? Don't I? They're not really sure here. And then we've got this King of Cups. Now, this is Pisces energy. Sometimes this is Scorpio energy. This is a water sign at the very least, Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. This represents that your person has a lot of love and emotions for you. They just may not necessarily outwardly express that. They don't wear their heart on their sleeve. They may not even be telling you how they actually feel about you. Even though they don't say it, they do have a lot of love and emotions for you. They feel a connection with you. And I think they're wanting to move forward with you in success and victory. I just don't think they can like make their mind up right yet. <clears throat> I think they're, they're contemplating making a love offer to you, but they're just not. I'm not sure what happened between you guys in the past. It does not seem like it was pleasant, though. Now, the last card in your person's energy for December 2020 is the strength card. This is Leo energy. This is about tapping into their internal strength, their, their inner courage to face their fears. Now usually when this card comes out that tells me that person has been through something really hard to deal with and they've had to tap into their inner strength in order to make it through it. This means your person does have the inner strength to make it through it. It can also represent trying to tame the beast within, like trying to tame their emotions, trying to rein themselves in, hold themselves back so they don't rush off and do anything rash or too hasty, trying to not let their emotions get the best of them, trying to maintain, so to speak. Let's clarify the strength card for Sagittarius's romantic person of interest as it relates... Okay, we got it. Hmm, yeah, they've been through something difficult on the bottom of the deck. We've got that Three of Swords again. This is heartbreak and sadness, again, from a third-party situation. If it's not your energy, it's not their energy. It could be a romantic third party. We, we see this Six of Cups, this someone from the past. It could be that. We've got potential sneaky behavior, lying, cheating, stealing. We've got this Devil energy. I mean, this could totally be some sort of past karmic relationship coming back sticking their nose in things, messing things up. Yeah, that's what's caused the, the stagnation, everything to be on hold. The brakes have been slammed on here. Trying to figure out what to do moving forward. 
they're at a crossroads. So I've got three twos out here in your person's energy. Twos are about choices and decisions. This is a choice about which path leads them to the world that they really want and which path do they need to leave behind. We've got the King of Wands under that. This is Sagittarius energy. This is someone who's got this bold, passionate, fiery determination, knows exactly what they want. They go after what they want. They don't take no for an answer. They see things through until the end. And right under that, we've got the Lovers. This is, I breathe you in. You breathe me in. We're connected. We're soulmates. We're twin flames. Whatever label you want to put on that. This is divine counterparts. This is two people who are probably supposed to be together. But again, it can also represent needing to make some sort of a choice here. And right under that, we've got the Five of Wands. This is, again, fives are conflict. So this is a conflict in their desires. They're pulling themselves in multiple different directions. They're internally conflicted about what it is that they actually want. Like I said, they can't seem to make up their mind on what to do here. They have a choice to make, and they're not really able to do it. And I'll be danged. Right under that, we've got the devil again. So, second time we've seen the devil here. This is some heavy energy, some toxic energy. This could be a feeling of being trapped in something, feeling like they can't escape from something. These two people right here are actually the same two people from the Lover's card. They've just spent so much time trapped here with the devil that they're growing horns and weird funny looking tails, feeling like they're trapped. Let's see what we have here. Now to clarify this strength card in your person's energy, we have the Ten of Cups, we have the Three of Wands, and we have the Ace of Swords. So this Ten of Cups again is Pisces energy. This is the Happy Fairy Tale ending card though. This is like two people together in love, emotionally happy, emotionally content. This is like everyone's together and in love. This is the happy fairy tale ending card, the happy family card. It's the only card I can think of off the top of my head that's better than this one would be like the sun. That's the happiest card in the deck. This is a close second place though. I think your person viewed the connection with you as the Ten of Cups, they felt like it was possible to get to the Ten of Cups with you. And now they've been through something rough here, some heartbreaking situation that's put everything on pause. It stagnated everything and left them at like a crossroads trying to figure out what to do. And it's taken a lot of inner strength to, to face all of this. The next card we have to clarify strength is the Three of Wands. So this is Aries energy. This is... The card that comes right after this fork in the road that we just saw, this crossroads, this which path leads them to the world they want, which path do they leave behind? Well, in the Three of Wands, that decision's already been made. They've chosen the path that leads them to the world they want. They're out actively taking steps going down that path. And they have this positive expectancy that something good is going to come out of that. It just hasn't materialized in the real physical 3D world yet, they're still waiting on it to happen. They believe it's going to happen, but they're just waiting on their ships to come in. Then the final card we have in their energy to clarify strength is the Ace of Swords. This is the Sword of Victory, the Sword of Truth, the Sword of Clarity. Now this can also be the sword you would use to sever a relationship or to sever something that's not in balance anymore. I don't, I'm, man, this looks like a mess. I, I, I'm hoping this is them getting the clarity about this Ten of Cups. Maybe this is them being, I don't, I really don't know. The, this devil is, I keep feeling pulled back to this devil. Something is not right here. We've got this Ten of Swords ending on your end. We've got death on your end. Something has come to an end. There's been abandonment being left out in the cold. There's been this time taken to try and heal from that. The, the overall energy of the whole reading is this Nine of Wands. This being walled off and defensive, 
trying to heal from being hurt. Right under that, we've got the Ten of Cups again, which we just saw in your person's energy. Under that, we've got the Page of Cups, news and messages of love and emotions, expressing feelings to each other. But then there's that being walled off and defensive, or being willing to fight for what it is that you guys want. Fight for what it is that you think is right. Fight for your desires. And we've got this Four of Cups again, which again, we've already seen in your person's energy. This either a love offer on the table already that hasn't been accepted or rejected yet, or this is you guys thinking about making a love offer, but not doing it for some reason. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right under that, we've got judgment. This is, this is either passing your own final verdict and judgment on something, as in making a final decision about all of this, calling it quits, or this is a card of second chances, like resurrection, bringing something back from the grave, bringing it back to life, transformed in a way that it's never going to be the same again. We've got a tower next. This is some abrupt change that has taken place. This is like everything came crashing down. So to me, this is like trying to bring everything back to life after this tower, after this painful ending that's happened, after this death to the connection that's happened that after this devil energy here this is everything fell apart and this is trying to bring it back to life because we've got the lovers card under that this is a very strong connection soulmate twin flame level energy and i've seen that in three different cards out here we've got the lovers that we've seen more than once We've got this soulmate twin flame level energy in the Six of Cups. And we've got it here in the 1111 card with the Four of Wands. I'm just not 100% sure what is going on between you guys. I just know that there's been some heartbreak and sadness. And it looks like things are a freaking mess. Now if you still have questions that you want answered about this situation or your relationship... Click on any of the videos that just appeared on your screen right now. And when you do, you'll be taken to more Sagittarius love readings that can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And I'll see you in the next video.